on which there have been some articles recently in the New Yorker that are wonderfully well informed, showing that their problem is nothing compared to ours. Although they still have a problem, but it is a minor they simply have clinics where if you declare yourself to be a heroin addict, you'll get your supply with the opportunity of consultation with uh, counselors or physicians who can help you kick it. But you can't kick heroin like that any more than you can kick alcohol like that because you get withdrawal symptoms and all kinds of problems. So... I think we have to consider the adoption of something like the British system and stop the racket. I have some wonderings in my mind as to what the Vietnam War was really about. And then it occurs to me that Laos is the, one of the biggest opium supply sources in the world. And whoever controls Laos is very rich. One remembers the opium wars when the British got control of the opium trade into China and they made enormous sums of money selling opium to the Chinese and there it's still sitting a great prize for anyone who can capture it who gets it so uh, we have to be rather cynical about these things and see and realize that uh, Various institutions do not exist for the good of the public, but for their own interests. And that when you prohibit something by law, you automatically sweep it under the carpet or drive it underground, where it festers and gets worse and worse and worse. Everything needs to be brought out into the open to have the sunlight on it. It's like, for example, the city streets the primitive kind of city street where, every, where all sorts of little shops along it and where mamas are sitting looking out of the window or sitting in chairs on the doorway and watch the passing crowd. There's far less likely to be crime in those streets than there is in the corridors of a housing development. Those long, long, empty corridors with nobody watching. Empty streets in nice residential apartment areas where nobody has a shop that's the ideal situation for crime. That's why I say bring everything out into the open. Let everybody watch. And then you automatically reduce crime. Now those are my preliminary observations on the legal aspect of the matter and I would welcome some discussion with you. I have a question about legalization. I I always thought that that was the answer, too. <coughs> For example, in um, Nevada, where gambling is legal, in spite of it being legal, it still seems the mafia has control of you know, the gambling sources. If, I'm just wondering if uh, something like gambling and these human needs for which people pay a huge price to, to participate, um, being such a great source of wealth would it not would, would that really ultimately solve the problem? Well, Nevada is a sort of island state surrounded by states which have completely different controls and attitudes. And since on a nationwide basis the mafia probably control it, they're pretty sure to maintain their rule in Nevada. to the power of the, of the breweries in Germany, they own almost every restaurant in Frankfurt, for example, one brewery or another, mm -hmm. and get everyone started. And the person doesn't sell their beer, they throw them out. Pretty soon, yes. Well, of course, this is another problem that's really separate from it. It's the problem of the mega corporations uh, which are bought up by other corporations which are finally owned by finance companies. Uh, uh, which is an absentee ownership and uh, they're interested in nothing but making money they don't give a hoot in hell 
as to the quality of the product. They have no pride in it. They just want to be sure that it makes money. And since uh, they get all this money, they have nothing to buy with it except other people's shoddy products. <laughs> Sanctuary crimes. Doesn't seem to work very well. You know, 75% of crime in San Francisco goes undetected. And if they did detect it all, the ho- all the hotels in town would not hold the prisoners. So, uh, punishment doesn't seem to be a deterrent, especially capital punishment. Uh, I think we have evidence from states or countries where it doesn't exist that uh, they may perhaps have a little less murder than uh, countries where they do. But... uh, I don't think it's any answer. There are a lot of problems that are solved by doing nothing about them. Is the idea of punishment uh, find its source in, say, Judeo-Christian thinking, or is this something that's common to... Oh no, it's not uh, confined to that tradition. Punishment is revenge. It's a, it's a authorized revenge. And let's face it, that's what it is. Now, the uh, Department of Corrections in California makes a great hullabaloo about rehabilitation. And so there are social service workers and chaplains and this, that and the other in the jails. But it's so obviously, the fact of the matter is that it's punishment. And you cannot uh, synthesize punishment and rehabilitation. It just doesn't work. We live in a society which has many self-contradictory institutions, like marriage, which is supposed to be based on romantic love, but is nevertheless a legal contract based on the old-fashioned arranged marriage. The two don't go together. (laughs) So there's a mess. And we don't realize, too, that the proliferation of government is as great a menace to society as overpopulation, pollution, and nuclear energy. Is a book, it's a parable in the Bible somewhere, I think it's in the book of Proverbs. The, there had to be found for some reason a tree or plant which would become king of the forest. So they first went to the noble oak and said, Would you please become king of the forest? And the oak said, Well, I don't really have time for that sort of work. I'm not good at administration. And uh, my work is to produce this excellent and solid hardwood. So then they went to the pine, and the pine said, Well, I don't think I'd be any good at that. I, my business is to um, produce uh, this lovely perfume in the forest and to uh, also be useful for, for lumber. And so they went round to all the trees and all had excuses. The vine was busy producing grapes, apple tree, apples and whatnot. They finally went to the bramble. And Ralph said, hmm, I have nothing special to do. Well, I'll take it over. So the bramble grew and grew and grew and strangled the whole forest.